You may have heard that California native plants look terrible in the summer. Or if you're new to gardening with California native plants, you might have experienced a beautiful spring season. And now that it's getting into July and August, some of your plants aren't looking their peak anymore. And you're wondering if you're doing it wrong. Hi, this is Scott from Chino Basin Water Conservation District here in the WaterWise Community Center Demonstration Garden. And this video is to help you understand what to do about it and how to keep your garden looking great year round by understanding the concept of dormancy, which affects some, but not all California native plants. The native plants that we grow in gardens in Southern California have a variety of adaptations to the long, hot, dry summers that we experience here. One of those adaptations is this phenomenon of summer dormancy, which is actually somewhat similar to what plants from other climates might experience in the winter, where they go deciduous and lose their leaves as a way of getting through what is the harsh time of the year. Here in Southern California, the summer is actually that harsh time of the year that's most difficult for plants to get through. And so the subset of native plants that experience summer dormancy respond to this by somewhat shutting down their metabolisms by dropping many of their leaves or allowing them to die. And they might look completely dead or they might only have a few green leaves. And essentially for these plants, it's totally natural. It's not a sign of them not being healthy, but summer ecologically is sort of their winter. And then when it cools off, and especially when we get our first rains, it's like they take a deep sigh and the year starts for them and they begin to look lush and beautiful again. But if you don't know which plants go dormant or understand that phenomenon of dormancy or what that should look like, it can look like things are just going wrong in the garden. But it's definitely not a case of all native plants are gonna look bad in the summer or experience this. And so with a little bit of research and with some prioritization and decision-making on your part, you can decide if the beautiful spring bloomers that go dormant will have a home in your garden, or if you're just going to rely on the beautiful evergreen native plants like Toyon right here, which are not going to experience summer dormancy, or for example, how you might want to deal with a native perennial like yarrow in front of me, which if treated as a true low water plant in the summer is going to look a little bit wilty just as its adaptation, or you can choose to water it a bit more and keep it looking perky year round. The decision is up to you, but you need to understand this concept so you're not just randomly planting native plants before you know what to expect during the hot time of the year. This Allen Chickering Sage had a glorious spring bloom of beautiful purple flowers. These are all the old dried seed heads. And so you could just imagine how covered in flowers that brought in butterflies and hummingbirds this plant was. It was incredible. And now that those flowers are gone, all of these seed heads are developing seed that finches and other small birds are going to be drawn to our park to eat. This is an incredible plant in terms of its beauty and its habitat value, but here we are today at the very end of June. We've just experienced our real first heat wave for the year. It's been in the mid 90s and this plant is looking a little bit dry and desiccated. So is this a problem? What should you do about this if your sage at home is exhibiting these characteristics or maybe some of your other California native plants? We're here to talk about that today. So this Allen Chickering sage is exhibiting what is referred to as summer dormancy. Summer dormancy is the completely natural process that some, but not all California native plants will go through in order to survive what they are adapted to. Long, hot summers in which there's no relief from the heat, there's no rainfall for many months on end. And so if you're not used to working with California native plants, this might look to you like a sign that this plant is suffering from being underwatered. And in fact, that is not necessarily the case. Common California native plants in either a home or a commercial scale garden that would be expected to exhibit some amount of summer dormancy, depending on their care, would include the sages, the sagebrushes, the bush sunflowers, including brittle bush, some of the California native buckwheats, as well as many of the smaller spring blooming perennials, including red buckwheat 
and many of the penstemons. When a gardener starts to see a plant exhibiting these characteristics, the first instinct for many of us is that the plant looks like it's wilting and it needs more water. This is exactly when I encourage you to stop and think strategically, because just adding more water when you see the plant and it looks like it's starting to wilt might be the right solution for certain kinds of gardens, but it is not the right solution for California native plantings. You might want to add more water, but it's not more is better. You want to have a plan. Your first option when you see a plant exhibiting summer dormancy is just to embrace it and understand that this is part of the natural cycle of some of these California native plants. And in fact, although the foliage does indeed look wilty, in its own way, as these seeds heads dry out, they are quite ornamental. And they're going to bring color to the garden in the form of the goldfinches and housefinches that are gonna come around to eat the seeds. And so many, many California native gardeners, once they start to understand that this is part of the natural cycle, and that in the fall, these plants are gonna come out of dormancy, they're gonna kind of take a deep breath and start to have this beautiful full foliage again, really begin to sort of see the signs of summer dormancy as part of the beauty of working with the cycles in a California native garden. I highly encourage you to consider this approach. One of the unintentional mistakes that many California native gardeners will make with their first California native plantings is that they fall in love with many, many of the really beautiful spring flowering plants that are going to bring tons and tons of color to the garden in March, April, and into May. However, many of those plants are that exact same plant palette, which later then goes summer dormant. And so if your whole front yard is sages and brittle bush and bush sunflower and penstemons, by the time you get to July, especially in inland areas, a large proportion of those plants might be wanting to exhibit signs of summer dormancy. And if you have very quickly draining soil in full sun, there's not going to be that much you can do about it. So one of the things I encourage you to think about in your garden design or your planting designs is if you don't love the look of a summer dormant garden, be strategic with how you mix the plants that will exhibit dormancy in the summer with other very low water, very drought tolerant California native plants, which do not exhibit summer dormancy in the same way. Many of those plants are going to be our more structural woody plants. And so if you think about plants like toyon, like holly leaf cherry, if you have room for trees, like oak trees, or even some of the plants which just takes the tiniest little bit of water to keep them from going dormant and actually really look great in the summer. That's many of the larger buckwheats like California buckwheat and Santa Cruz Island buckwheat. Those are all going to be ways of balancing out the look of those deep greens of those more evergreen plants with then a few summer dormant, beautiful spring flowering plants here or there. So when they do go dormant, you have more of that lush evergreen backdrop, even in the middle of July and August. The other option you have, which is one to be explored carefully, is to start to play around with how often you provide your deep irrigations of your California native plants. In general, we recommend once the plants are established that you're going to want to provide in Southern California a deep watering of the equivalent of a one inch rain event every three to four weeks to provide for the needs of your native garden. And what that will provide you in the hot inland area in full sun with well-drained soil is something that might look kind of like this. It might look more lush, but essentially what you're doing is you're preventing your plants from going extremely dormant, but in the middle of July and August or after a heat wave, they're not going to look super fresh. However, if you really, really feel the need to keep your plants looking more lush, especially if you're in full sun with well-drained soils, some California native plants can tolerate watering up to every two weeks, still providing that deep irrigation when you do. Many, many of the California native flowering perennials, like the penstemons and red buckwheat, will absolutely respond well to that. They'll look a little fresher. In general, you're not going to 
negatively impact their health by doing that. However, fewer of the native shrubs are going to react to that well. So it is really dependent. If you have portly draining soil, you want to be very careful about this. In this landscape where we have fast draining soil, watering every other week would indeed keep the plant looking lusher. However, it will also make it grow much more abundantly. And in fact, for us in our park situation out here would probably just make it grow more than we want it to. And it would require more pruning, which we're not really willing to trade to have the plants just look a little bit lusher in the middle of the summer. Here, we are here to demonstrate and embrace the look of a little bit of summer dormancy. I also wanted to show you this Allen Chickering Sage. This sage was planted on the same day in the same landscape, same irrigation zone, getting watered at the same time, treated identically. It's in full sun as defined as six or more hours of direct sunlight. However, it gets some shade in the first part of the day from an adjacent oak tree. And so by planting our species that are prone to going summer dormant in areas that might still be full sun for a full sun requiring plant, but that just sort of take the edge off by not being in full blasting sun, sun up to sun down in the summer. And especially if we put those species in an area where they get morning sun, maybe midday, but then some shade from that hottest afternoon sun, our plants will just naturally not go as dormant in most landscape situations. And so it's still not as fresh as it is in spring, it's still going through the seasons, but that little bit of shade either in the morning or especially in the afternoon, can help take the edge off. And so if you want to grow a species that does exhibit summer dormancy, but you're not quite ready to embrace that fully summer dormant aesthetic, that's up to you. This is one quick tip that you can use when you're citing plants in your design in order to work with that a little bit. So we used our Allen Chickering Sage as just one example of a common California native plant used in gardens, which goes into a semi-dormant state in the summer. But that's just the beginning. We have so much more to teach you about a whole variety of very common favorite California native plants people love to use in their gardens and what to expect them to look like in the summer. Throughout the rest of the season, we're going to be releasing a whole series of videos with plant profiles showing what these plants are going to look like when they are being treated well, but allowed to go through their natural cycles. So be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to be sure to see the next video in this series.